This episode is brought to you by IVP. It's common for people of color to feel a unique kind of aloneness living in this country. In her book, Beyond Ethnic Loneliness, author Prasanta Verma unpacks the exhausting effects of cultural isolation. And she explains how in the midst of disconnection and erasure, people of color can experience places of exile becoming places of belonging with ourselves, others, and God. And as a listener of this podcast, you can receive Beyond Ethnic Loneliness for 25% off when you use the promo code IVPOD25. That's IVPOD25 at IVPress.com. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Your word is truth, your word is life. Presented by Inner Varsity Press. Your word is truth, your word is life. The Daily Audio Bible Podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes, that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading, Judges chapter 16, verses 4, through Judges chapter 18. Judges chapter 16, beginning at verse 4. After this, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah, who lived in the Sorek Valley. The rulers of the Philistines went up to visit her and said to her, Trick him. Find out what makes him so strong and how we can subdue him and humiliate him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 silver pieces. So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me what makes you so strong and how you can be subdued and humiliated. Samson said to her, If they tie me up with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I will become weak and be just like any other man. So the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she tied him up with them. They hid in the bedroom, and then she said to him, The Philistines are here, Samson. He snapped the bowstrings as easily as a thread of yarn snaps when it is put close to fire. The secret of his strength was not discovered. Delilah said to Samson, Look, you deceived me and told me lies. Now tell me how you can be subdued. He said to her, If they tie me tightly with brand new ropes that have never been used, I will become weak and be just like any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them and said to him, The Philistines are here, Samson. The Philistines were hiding in the bedroom, but he tore the ropes from his arms as if they were a piece of thread. Delilah said to Samson, Up to now you have deceived me and told me lies. Tell me how you can be subdued. He said to her, If you weave the seven braids of my hair into the fabric on the loom and secure it with the pen, I will become weak and be like any other other man. So she made him go to sleep, wove the seven braids of his hair into the fabric on the loom, fastened it with the pen, and said to him, The Philistines are here, Samson. He woke up and tore away the pen of the loom and the fabric. She said to him, How can you say I love you when you will not share your secret with me? Three times you have deceived me and have not told me what makes you so strong. She nagged him every day and pressured him until he was sick to death of it. Finally, he told her his secret. He said to her, My hair has never been cut, for I have been dedicated to God from the time I was conceived. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me. I will become weak and be just like all other men. When Delilah saw that he had told her his secret, she sent for the rulers of the Philistines, saying, Come up here again, for he has told me his secret. So the rulers of the Philistines went up to visit her, bringing the silver in their hands. She made him go to sleep on her lap and then called a man in to shave off the seven braids of his hair. She made him vulnerable, and his strength left him. She said, The Philistines are here, Samson. 
He woke up and thought, I will do as I did before and shake myself free. But he did not realize that the Lord had left him. The Philistines captured him and gouged out his eyes. They brought him down to Gaza and bound him in bronze chains. He became a grinder in the prison. His hair began to grow back after it had been shaved off. Samson's Death and Burial The rulers of the Philistines gathered to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their god, and to celebrate. They said, Our god has handed Samson, our enemy, over to us. When the people saw him, they praised their god, saying, Our god has handed our enemy over to us, the one who ruined our land and killed so many of us. When they really started celebrating, they said, Call for Samson so he can entertain us. So they summoned Samson from the prison, and he entertained them. They made him stand between two pillars. Samson said to the young man who held his hand, Position me so I can touch the pillars that support the temple. Then I can lean on them. Now the temple was filled with men and women, and all the rulers of the Philistines were there. There were 3,000 men and women on the roof watching Samson entertain. Samson called to the Lord, O sovereign Lord, remember me. Strengthen me just one more time, O God, so I can get swift revenge against the Philistines from my two eyes. Samson took hold of the two middle pillars that supported the temple, and he leaned against them with his right hand on one and his left hand on the other. Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. He pushed hard, and the temple collapsed on the rulers and all the people in it. He killed many more people in his death than he killed during his life. His brothers and all his family went down and brought him back. They buried him between Zorah and Eshtael in the tomb of Manoah, his father. He had led Israel for twenty years. Judges chapter 17. Micah makes his own religion. There was a man named Micah from the Ephraimite hill country. He said to his mother, You know, the 1,100 pieces of silver which were stolen from you, about which I heard you pronounce a curse, look here, I have the silver. I stole it, but now I am giving it back to you. His mother said, May the Lord reward you, my son. When he gave back to his mother the 1,100 pieces of silver, his mother said, I solemnly dedicate this silver to the Lord. It will be for my son's benefit. We will use it to make a carved image and a metal image. When he gave the silver back to his mother, she took 200 pieces of silver to a silversmith who made them into a carved image and a metal image. She then put them in Micah's house. Now this man Micah owned a shrine. He made an ephod and some personal idols and hired one of his sons to serve as a priest. In those days, Israel had no king. Each man did what he considered to be right. Micah hires a professional. There was a young man from Bethlehem in Judah. He was a Levite who had been temporarily residing among the tribe of Judah. This man left the town of Bethlehem in Judah to find another place to live. He came to the Ephraimite hill country and made his way to Micah's house. Micah said to him, Where do you come from? He replied, I am a Levite from Bethlehem in Judah. I am looking for a new place to live. Micah said to him, Stay with me. Become my advisor and priest. I will give you ten pieces of silver per year, plus clothes and food. So the Levite agreed to stay with the man. The young man was like a son to Micah. Micah paid the Levite. The young man became his priest and lived in Micah's house. Micah said, Now I know the Lord will make me rich, because I have this Levite as my priest. Judges chapter 18 The tribe of Dan finds an inheritance. In those days, Israel had no king. And in those days, the Danite tribe was looking for a place to settle because at that time, they did not yet have a place to call their own among the tribes of Israel. The Danites sent out from their whole tribe five representatives, capable men from Zorah and Eshtael to spy out the land and explore it. They said to them, go explore the land. They came to the Ephraimite hill country and spent the night at Micah's house. As they approached Micah's house, they recognized the accent of the young Levite. So they stopped there and said to him, who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? What is your business here? He told them what Micah had done for him, saying, he hired me and I became his priest. They said to him, seek a divine oracle for us so we can know if we will be successful on our mission. The priest said to them, go with confidence. The Lord will be with you on your mission. So the five men journeyed on and arrived in Laish. They noticed that the people there were living securely, like the Sidonians do, undisturbed and unsuspecting. No conqueror was troubling them in any way. They lived far from the Sidonians and had no dealings with anyone. When the Danites returned to their tribe in Zorah and Eshtael, their kinsmen asked them, How did it go? They said, Come on, let's attack them, for we saw their land, and it is very good. You seem lethargic. But don't hesitate to invade and conquer the land. When you invade, you will encounter unsuspecting people. The land is wide. God is handing it over to you, a place that lacks nothing on earth. So 600 Danites, fully armed, set out from the Zorah and Ashtael. They went up and camped in Kiriath-Jerim in Judah. To this day, 
That place is called Camp of Dan. It is west of Kiriath Jerim. From there, they traveled through the Ephraimite hill country and arrived at Micah's house. The five men who had gone to spy out the land of Laish said to their kinsmen, Do you realize that inside these houses are an ephod, some personal idols, a carved image, and a metal image? Decide now what you want to do. They stopped there, went inside the young Levite's house, which belonged to Micah, and asked him how he was doing. Meanwhile, the 600 Danites fully armed stood at the entrance to the gate. The five men who had gone to spy out the land broke in and stole the carved image, the ephod, the personal idols, and the metal image, while the priest was standing at the entrance to the gate with the 600 fully armed men. When these men broke into Micah's house and stole the carved image, the ephod, the personal idols, and the metal image, the priest said to them, What are you doing? They said to him, Shut up. Put your hand over your mouth and come with us. You can be our advisor and priest. Wouldn't it be better to be a priest for a whole Israelite tribe than for just one man's family? The priest was happy. He took the ephod, the personal idols, and the carved image and joined the group. They turned and went on their way, but they walked behind the children, the cattle, and their possessions. After they had gone a good distance from Micah's house, Micah's neighbors gathered together and caught up with the Danites. When they called out to the Danites, the Danites turned around and said to Micah, Why have you gathered together? He said, You stole my gods that I made, as well as the priest, and then went away. What do I have left? How can you have the audacity to say to me, What do you want? The Danites said to him, don't say another word to us or some very angry men will attack you and you and your family will die. The Danites went on their way. When Micah realized they were too strong to resist, he turned around and went home. And the Danites took what Micah had made as well as his priests and came to Laish, where the people were undisturbed and unsuspecting. They struck them down with the sword and burned the city. No one came to the rescue because the city was far from Sidon and they had no dealings with anyone. The city was in a valley near Beth Rehil. The Danites rebuilt the city and occupied it. They named it Dan after their ancestor, who was one of Israel's sons, but the city's name used to be Laish. The Danites worshipped the carved image. Jonathan, descendant of Gershom, son of Moses, and his descendants served as priests for the tribe of Dan until the time of the exile. They worshipped Micah's carved image. The whole time, God's authorized shrine was in Shiloh. New Testament reading. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 24. The mission of the 72. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Go, I am sending you out like lambs surrounded by wolves. Do not carry a money bag, a traveler's bag, or sandals. And greet no one on the road. Whenever you enter a house, first say, May peace be on this house. And if a peace loving person is there, your peace will remain on him, but if not, it will return to you. Stay in that same house, eating and drinking what they give you, for the worker deserves his pay. Do not move around from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and the people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in that town and say to them, The kingdom of God has come upon you. But whenever you enter a town and the people do not welcome you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, the kingdom of God has come. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon in the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will be thrown down to Hades. The one who listens to you listens to me, and the one who rejects you rejects me. And the one who rejects me rejects the one who sent me. Then the 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. So he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Look, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and on the full force of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names stand written in heaven. On that same occasion, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent 
and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your gracious will. All things have been given to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son decides to reveal him. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. God, thank you for your word. My goodness, Lord, this reading, oh God, just that passage, oh God, about Samson and Delilah asking over and over again, very directly, how to humiliate him and how, oh God, to uh, weaken him. And Samson tricking her, you know, of course, several times, but then eventually giving in and telling her exactly how to weaken, weaken his power, oh God. That is just so emblematic, oh God, of the ways, oh God, how we can be weakened, oh God, in our defenses, oh Lord God, even in our, our faith and commitment, oh God, even to you, oh God, when people question directly, oh God, um, even indirectly, oh God, about why we keep our faith in Jesus, why we, we have this hope in the gospel, why do we continue to trust God even when we're suffering and even when we see terrible things happening in the world, oh God, it can begin to weaken our faith, oh God, and we can just begin to give in, oh God. But Lord, I pray, oh God, that your spirit would continue to strengthen us and that you would keep us in the faith, that you would protect our faith, oh Lord God. That even when, oh God, you did give Samson over, oh God, to Delilah in that way, oh God, that even in your grace and your mercy and after, oh God, that violent act was committed against him where his eyes were gouged out, oh God, something that I forgot until I read this passage once more, oh God, that as a, a disabled man now, Samson was able to, once again, he called out to you for help and strength and was able to topple the pillars of that temple, O oh God. And just the grace, O oh God, that you gave Samson in that moment, O oh God, to even show up and answer his prayer, O oh God, just shows us just how gracious and merciful you are, O oh God, and that your grace and your mercy are available to us, God. We thank you. We thank you so much for that. And, and thank you, O oh God, for this reminder in Luke, O oh Lord God, that not to rejoice the miracles and the, the wonderful things that we do, O oh God, or whatever the wonderful things that we perceive that we do for your kingdom, oh God, but to rejoice that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. God, I thank you. God, I thank you that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life, oh God. I thank you. I thank you for those, oh God, whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life under the sound of my voice, oh God. And I pray for those whose names are not yet written in the, the Lamb's book of life. God, I pray that you would draw, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you will remove the scales from their eyes, that they might see the beautiful light of the gospel and put their faith, their hope, and their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, oh God. We don't know the day or the hour when our lives will be demanded of us, oh Lord. So help us, oh God, to stay ready, oh Lord God, so that when our time comes, oh Lord God, we know, oh God, that our names will be in the book of life, O Lord. I pray this in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag get in the word and hashtag Truth's Table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth's Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee. Yeah.